Okay, today's drawing is going to be the rocker arm. To get started on this drawing, I'm going to start with the circles that are here, the 5 eighths of an inch drill, and over here, we'll line those up and get them set apart. And then there's a lot of new tools that we're going to discover, some snapping and a new tool to be able to get a lot of these curves in here. <clears throat> and then we'll also uh, talk about two ways to create this broached hexagonal um, connector here in the middle. So we'll start with the 5 eighths of an inch drill holes. I'm just going to drill a center diameter, start kind of down here in the corner. 5 slash 8. Now, that circle center right here, if we go up 1 and 3 quarter, we get to this center line, and then we will move over 5 and 5 eighths of an inch to get to the center of this one. So first thing we need to do is go up from the center 1 and 3 quarter, 1.75, and then over five and five eighths, five dash, five slash eight. So this location right here is the location of this circle right there. So we're going to draw another five eighths of an inch diameter circle. <clears throat> now that we have those two in place, we can make the larger circles that go outside and around them, and we can find this large circle here and then the center of that. So we'll go with this diameter circle first, three quarter inch radius. So we'll go to our center radius tool. We'll draw a three quarters of an inch radius circle out and around this whole thing. And we'll do the same for down here, three quarters of an inch radius down at the end of this little part of the finger, so to speak. Oops, make sure I got right in the center there. 0.75 radius. There we go. Now those are just going to be used for part of the circle, and so we're going to have to attach on to them in a later step. For right now, I'm going to come from the center of this circle again and move over the three inches that I need to get to the center of this set of circles and the um, hexagon right here. So I'll draw my line. And again, you don't have to actually draw a line. If I just extend out this way and type a 3, it gets me right to where I need to go. So I'll just draw a little extra line there just to sort of represent where I'm supposed to get to the center. So we have a couple of circles to use here. First is this largest outside diameter is a one and three quarter inch radius to get to this part of the curve and it will be this little part of the curve up here. So I'll draw a large one and three quarter inch radius circle. 1.75 for the big guy. Now inside of that is a three inch diameter circle. So I'll change to diameter. Come in here and draw a three inch diameter circle. And then lastly would be this hexagon, and we'll come to that one in just a little bit. So now to connect this largest circle, the one and three quarter radius, to the smaller three quarter radius, we have to draw some lines. <clears throat> but as you can see, if I just go from the quadrant to the quadrant, it doesn't look the same. There's a bump right here, and this cuts through the top. So it's not nice and smooth across the top from one circle to the other. So this line is not correct. It's not just from the quadrants. What we have to do is a new kind of snapping to go in between these two. So I'm going to grab my line tool. I'm going to come down to the object snap. And once again, I'm going to turn off everything that is above the word tangent. Now a tangent line to a circle is a line that touches the circle in only one place. So if I grab the tangent line here, click once on the top edge of this circle, doesn't really matter where, and I start dragging it to the top edge of this circle, the tangent snap appears again, and even if I place it sort of a little bit out of place, it will connect those lines together 
where they are really nice and smooth now. And there's a super smooth transition in between those two. So I can do the same thing again on the bottom. Tangent, tangent, and my lines snap together. So now I could actually uh, delete some of these lines in between here, and I can trim and take away that large part, and I can trim and take away that large part, and you can see that I now have this half of the drawing complete. Now we need to get to out here. Now this gives us a radius, but it doesn't have a center point. It doesn't tell us where the center point of this radius comes from. So what we have to do is make another kind of tangent. We have to tangent a circle in between two other circles, and it gives us a radius. So we have another one way out here, too. There's a large radius circle out here that has an unknown point. So what we will do is move over to this side. We will grab a circle tool that is called Tangent Tangent Radius, Tan Tan Radius. And what this does is it allows us to make a circle that is tangent to two other circles. So we will start by making the small one. We'll tangent onto this circle, we'll tangent onto this circle, and I find that it makes it a whole lot easier if you move your mouse to where approximately the center of that radius should be. And you see that the radius is one and a half right here, and I already have one and a half locked onto my computer, but I'll just type 1.5 and specify that radius, and it gives you a circle that touches this circle at an infinitely small point and this circle at an infinitely small point trim that just to make it look a little bit smoother right to there and then we'll do the larger one which is a five inch diameter radius or five inch radius excuse me so we're going to go from this circle to the largest circle over here again so we'll get that same tangent tangent radius circle we'll tangent off of this side again it helps to put your mouse approximately where you think it would lock on to click there once, click onto it up here once, and then move my mouse this way. If I put my mouse up here, it would make the circle go the opposite direction. So I want my mouse down here for the center, and I'll type a 5-inch radius, and it will make that large curve go the whole way around, out and around there. Get rid of that line. I can trim this whole big part. Don't need that. Don't need that part there. Don't need this part there. So now the last part is this center. So we've, we've created the whole of the outside. That's all in place. Now we just need this uh, hexagon in the middle here. There is a tool that will allow you to do that. We can actually create a polygon. There's a polygon tool that's located underneath the rectangle tool. And before you click anything, it asks for the number of sides. So right now I'll type in six sides. And it says specify the center of the polygon. And I need to turn on some snaps again. So I'll snap on to the bottom of this thing. Now it says, do you need it to be inscribed in a circle or circumscribed about a circle? And that deals with how big is this thing overall. And the problem with drawing our uh, diameter this way or our, our hexagon this way is that we don't know anything but the distance from this side to this side. We don't know how big it is from here to here. Now we could do a lot of math and we could figure this all out, but a simpler way other than trying to find that size would be to draw it ourselves. So I'm going to escape out of this. And what I'm going to do is draw that hexagon using the array tool. So we know that and if we're looking at this when it's not on a 15 degree angle, we just go from the center over to one side, not on a 15 degree angle, it would be half the distance of this one and three quarter inch brooch. So if we need to go make a line, we're going to draw it off to one side. We need it half of one and three quarter. Half of one is a half. Half of three quarter is three eighths. One half plus three eighths is seven eighths of an inch. So if I type 7 eighths of an inch right there, 
and then I draw a line up. I don't care how big this line is. I'm just going to use it and I'm going to extend it down the other way as well. So we've come from the center point, seven eighths of an inch out. We draw a line up and down in the air. Basically what we've done is come this way and draw on this line, but it's not at a 15 degree angle yet. We'll solve that problem in a minute. So what we do <coughs> is we take this line, we don't need any of these lines, but we take this line and we array it from this center point six times and there is our hexagon. And as long as we've made that line long enough, we know that it will cross over with the other lines that it gets arrayed around. And so that's correct. That's what we need right there. So we'll hit enter to accept that. Now we need to do two things. We need to trim it up so that it looks nice. And in order to do that, we can't trim it because right now it's an, it's an array, so it's all one piece right now. So what we're going to do is we have to select it, and then we have to explode. E-X-P-L-O-D-E. And now we're going to be able to trim this because each one of these is a single line off to itself. So we need to trim... We're just going to go around the outside, trimming off all these extra pieces. Okay, now we got a hexagon. Now we're going to select just this hexagon, and we are going to rotate the entire thing on a 15 degree angle. And you can see it's going 15 degrees this way. So all I have to do is just select the entire thing, rotate. I'm going to select a base point as in the middle, and then select a 15 degree angle. There we go. Delete that inside part. And there is your rocker arm.